Bayes' theorem lets us update a probability with new evidence. So for example, if there's a disease that afflicts 1% of the population and we have a test that is 99% accurate, if our test result is positive, what is the probability that the patient has the disease? In order to illustrate Bayes' theorem, I'll use an example from Miller's chapter six, which is assigned FRM candidates. But he uses a classic example to illustrate Bayes' theorem, and that is where we have a medical test to diagnose whether or not a patient has a disease. And although the word problem is in paragraph format, we only it's actually reduces just to these two assumptions that allow us to ask the question that applies Bayes' theorem. And it's a pretty clever question and a realistic example because our, for most of us, our hunch about the correct answer is very different from the actual answer. So the two assumptions are that there is a disease that afflicts 1% of the population. And secondly, that we have a test for this disease that is 99% accurate or has an accuracy rate of 99%. And then we can ask the question that is a conditional probability, which is to say, if we observe a test result that is positive, what is the probability the patient has the disease? Okay, so that looks straightforward enough. To help, I've captured the assumption here in what is a almost a probability matrix, but with raw numbers. So I have assumed that the population, for example, has 10,000 people, although it doesn't matter what we assume for that. We could put in 100,000 or a million and we'll get the same answer at the end. So I'm assuming that the population has 10,000 people to keep it small and round. And this question has two variables or involves two variables. First, the question of whether a, a person actually has the disease or not. And I'm following Miller chapter six and his notation so that a healthy person is denoted with just an H. And I've also colored that green. And, and a person who's not healthy has the disease is not H colored red. And then we also have the test result, which is positive or negative. So that's T plus or T negative. And so for example, you can see if the population is 10,000, and the disease afflicts 1% of the population, then 100 people have the disease. That's right here. Okay, so let's apply Bayes' theorem to answer this question and see whether our intuition is different than the actual answer. And for myself, I can tell you my, my gut answer is very different from the result. Um, the question is asking a conditional probability. So that is to say, it's asking us what is the probability that the patient is not healthy or has the disease, not H, conditional on a positive test result? So that's a conditional probability question. In Bayes terminology, it's a posterior probability um, because we have the evidence here of T plus or that we've observed a positive test result. But Bayes theorem just applies a basic probability relationship. I reviewed this in a previous video. And that is to say that the conditional probability must be equal to a joint probability divided by an unconditional probability. So in this case, the joint probability is the joint probability that, that both the patient has the disease and the test result is positive. So I'm using the intersection symbol and so that's the joint probability in the numerator divided by the unconditional probability that the test result is positive. That's a basic relationship. Conditional is equal to joint divided by unconditional. And also, of course, we can multiply the numerator, the denominator, excuse me, we can multiply the denominator on both sides and get a very familiar version of this, which is to say, we could, we could also represent this as, if we multiply this denominator, get it over here, we'd have the unconditional probability multiplied by the conditional probability is equal to the joint probability. Okay, but we're using this because we're solving for this question. And now here I have the problem statement in matrix format, and I've converted it here into a proper probability matrix, meaning that the sum of my cells is 100%. So that just, translates the raw units, given my assumption of 10,000 people in the population. 
But I've also uh, represented here a tree because basically two ways to visualize the Bayes theorem. I tend to pre prefer the tree as somewhat intuitive. And so that's here where we ha have the actual population and then unconditional probability of disease is 1% and unconditional probability of healthy is 99%, right? 1% of the people have the disease. And then we have conditional probabilities here that reflect our the given assumption that the test is 99% accurate. And that 99% accuracy breaks down here into two ways, into both a so-called sensitivity here of 99% and a specificity here of 99%. So that is to say that if the patient has the disease, we've been told the test is 99% accurate, meaning it's also, also meaning it's 99% sensitive, which is to say if they have the disease, there's a 99% probability that the test result will be positive. After all, that would be a true positive. And that also implies here this 1% conditional probability of what we could call a false negative, right? Patient has the disease, but the test result comes back falsely as uh, and gives us a false negative. Um, on the other hand, down here, if the uh, for the healthy population, conditional unhealthy, we as part of that assumption that the test is 99% accurate, we know that the specificity is 99%, meaning if the patient is healthy, there is a 99% probability that the conditional probability that the test comes back negative. After all, we can call that the true negative outcome. And that is also to say that there is a 1% conditional probability of what we would call a false positive, right? Here's the false negative, so here's the false positive. Here's the true negative, and here's the true positive. The 99% true positive is also called sensitivity. The 99% true negative is also called specificity. So now we can visualize what this conditional probability is asking us for, and remember, it's giving us the outcome of the test and asking us to, to determine the probability that the patient actually has the disease. And so we end up, what we have as evidence here is a positive test and that's colored in purple. What we want to know is the probability that the patient has the disease. And so visually, I think this is the most intuitive way to look at it. What we're visually looking for is the probability that we've ended up here at this outcome. After all, we got a positive test result, but we really want to know is, does the patient have the disease? And without knowing that, the probability that we end up in this outcome is the probability here of this joint outcome divided by the unconditional probability that there is a positive test result. And so that is the visual representation here of this solution to the Bayes, or this application of the Bayes theorem, which is to say the joint probability here in the numerator divided by the unconditional probability of a positive test result, which is the sum of both of these outcomes. So in this case, the numerator here, the joint outcome of has the disease and positive test result is 1% times 99%. And I'm just going to omit the percentages so I don't get too messy. And you'll just know that there are percentages there. 1% times 99% is the joint probability of a disease and positive test result divided by the unconditional probability of a positive test result because after all that fraction represents the probability that we got to this outcome through this node. And so the unconditional probability of a positive test result is the summation of these two joint outcomes. And so that includes the same joint outcome that we have in the numerator. After all, that's part of it. Plus this joint outcome down here, which is 99% healthy, 
plus 1% positive test uh, result. So again, without the percentages, that's 99 multiplied by 1. And you can actually see here, this is very elegantly, simply reduces to 1 half, and that's the answer. Uh, this conditional on observing a positive test result, the probability that our patient has the disease is only 50%, even though our test result is 99% accurate. So perhaps that was a counterintuitive finding for you, as it is for me, but it's really driven by the fact that 99%, so many of this population is healthy, and such that if we take a look here at the row for uh, positive test results, you can see that um, although 99, 99 people would be uh, would have the disease, fully 99%, 99 people out of the 10,000 would uh, produce a positive test result, even though the test is 99% accurate. So put another way, or what explains the intuition for me is this, this cell right here, which is the false positive, right? Here's the true positive. These people have, these 99 people have the disease and the test result comes back positive. But here we have nine, fully 99 people, the same number of people that fall into the false positive. Why? Because although this false positive rate is only 1%, it's 1% of 9,900 people, a lot of healthy people. So that if we take the raw numbers and look at this from the probability matrix standpoint, what we're solving for here, this conditional probability, we're solving for the probability here of disease, uh, jointly in the numerator, people with the disease and positive test result divided by here, the unconditional probability of the positive test result. So this cell divided by the 1.98% is 50%. So another way to look at it. That's base theorem. I hope that's helpful.